Continuation of last week's sermon, love is to lay down your life for your friends. So last week we started to look at love. What is love? How do we really show someone we love them? Uh, For Charmaine, for me to just every morning say I love you Charmaine really doesn't mean much. Uh, It's really got to be in a demonstration. You know, words are very easy to say. See, very easy to say, I love you God, I love you Yeshua, I love you Jesus, I love you Yahweh. What does it really mean? Most of the time it means nothing. You know, it's really we've got to demonstrate our love. And the greatest way, as we studied last week, is to lay down your life for someone. You know, when you see sometimes on YouTube and on TV where the guy... Uh, in especially in America where they've got a lot of bears and they're out camping and the bear attacks the wife and the husband goes and tries to wrestle the bear and basically loses his life and lets, so that his wife gets free. You know, this guy really loved his wife. And we also shared the little story about, um, uh, Charmaine corrected me in this one, <laughs> was the, uh, the girl and the boy were having a night swim in a swimming pool and all of a sudden an alligator crept in and dived into the pool and was attacking the girlfriend. And what did the boyfriend do? He jumped out. Now, did this this guy love her? No. You know. So sometimes a demonstration of our love is basically, you know, dying for someone. And as we studied the scriptures, we basically saw that we really have to die... Not, a, not a, the second death, or not even the first death, but a die daily to Yahweh to demonstrate that we love him. Because Yahweh himself, he died for us. He came in the, in the bodily form of Yeshua, Jesus, and suffered and died a terrible death to show that he really loved us. And as I pointed out last week, you know, what other God... Is there any other name God who has been declared as a loving saviour who has declared that he would give his life to save you and me? And I can't think of not one. There's not a, one other God out there, even Allah, didn't come down onto this earth and die for all the Muslims. He wants all the Muslims to die for him. Yet our Yahweh came bodily and died for you and me. Acts 2.21, and it shall be that everyone who shall call on the name of Yahweh will be saved. So he's there trying to save us. But he's only going to save those who love him. So how do we demonstrate our love for him? The only way we can demonstrate our love for Yahweh is to die daily. Now that doesn't mean physically die. That means something else. We learnt what that was last week again, was well, I'd like to say the simple thing of wearing zitzits. You know, it's an instruction, a commandment to wear our zitzits so that we can remember his instructions to us, his Torah, his instructions. And when we first started to, I know when I first started to wear it, it was a very difficult decision to make. To think, well, here I'm going to go to different places, bowling even, and I'll be flapping around with these zitzits. What are people going to think of me? You know? Who cares? Who cares? Yeah, Shaman says. Who cares? Because I want to demonstrate my love to Yahweh that I want to follow his instructions. So I'll just skip through some of these things there that we did last week. Oh, it reminds me. What about uh, we're all brought up worshipping Yahweh on Sunday and uh, Christmas, celebrating Christmas, celebrating Easter. And all of a sudden we realise that these things are pagan things and we've got to change. We've got to come and start to worship him on a Sabbath, obey his Sabbath instructions, his fourth commandment. We've got to realise that Christmas is a pagan celebration. We've got to put it away. We can't celebrate more anymore with our families on Christmas. We can't celebrate, celebrate with our families at Easter because these are pagan days. And it takes us, we have to actually die 
to these things. It's a death. When Christmas comes, we've got to say to our family, friends and whatever, sorry, we do not celebrate pagan feast days. We're going to celebrate our Yahweh's feast days, his times when he calls us to meet him at those times. And that takes a death. We have to die to what our traditions that have been inbred into us, even as little kids, little children. And it takes a death, a dying. A lot of things we've got to die to, die to ourselves. And I asked the question last week, which commandments do we struggle with individually and eventually have to die to our own flesh, opinions and traditions? So it's not so much a deathly, or what would you call it, a physical dying, the, the first death. It, yeah, it feels like it. When you've got to die to that thing that's hanging on you, your tradition, what your mother taught you, what your father taught you, what your family taught you, what... You know, for a lot of us ex-Catholics, all the thick traditions that we were taught. Communion. Communion, to me, as a little boy, because I went to a Catholic school and I went to a Catholic church for every Sunday because it was a mortal sin if I didn't. And then all of a sudden I realised later on in life that communion is another pagan thing. It's actually a magical ceremony. They're trying to do a magical thing of recreating Christ here on earth. And I have to die to that. And the feast days. Now we realise we've got feast days. Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, trumpets, atonement, tabernacles, the Sabbaths, new moon. These are feast days where Yahweh is calling us to come and meet him. It's an appointment. It's a time. And we've got to sometimes, even on those, there are special... Um, High Sabbaths that we have to, again, not work on. And so it's another death to all these things. But it, then when we start to work at it and celebrate them, we find it's, well, gee, I enjoy this. This is a time when I can actually meet Yahweh. This is a special time of meeting him where he will be really more, more than ever listening to what I'm asking him or what, how I'm talking to him. And plus I go and hear from him. But... First of all, we have to die to our traditions, especially the seventh day. You know, uh, I, probably in a way I thank Yahweh that I, when I learned about the Sabbath day, I wasn't working. <laughs> I got it easy. But some of you out there, you got it really difficult because you have to make a, that's a major death. Because you've got to go to your boss and you've got to say, uh, sorry, I worship and celebrate my Elohim on the Sabbath, not on the Sunday. You know, and we've got to realise sometimes too, if the Muslims can do it and they get the days off, well, why can't we? Why shouldn't we? How much do we really love Yahweh? Do we really believe that he's going to look after us and supply our needs? And I like this little um, picture that came up. I found the Sabbath, the rest is up to you. It's a day of rest and it's up to you what you do about it. Then we looked at some of the things that we really have to die to. You know, you sh the commandments. We haven't really truly followed Yahweh's commandments. And as I said, for most of us guys, if you're a normal guy, uh, this one in Deuteronomy 5.21, you shall not last after your neighbour's wife. That's one of the things men have to really work at. Because something, Yahweh's made women beautiful, he's made us attractive to them, and we can easily fall into this lusting after other women. So, John 15, 12, 13 says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I loved you. Greater love than this has no one, that anyone should lay down his life for his friends. So, Yeshua tells us what is the greatest Love, what is the greatest way to show our love? Is to lay down our life for our friends. So if I laid down my life, um, I, and I th thought back to, because we've been watching a lot on TV about all the wars that have gone, the first world war, second world war and that, and I looked at all these guys and thought, 
These guys are laying down their lives for their wives, their children, their friends. They're showing a great, greatest love by going to war and basically dying. There are so many died in the, in the wars, it's ridiculous, you know. But they did it in love. Most of them did anyway. And how do we show our love to Yahweh? We've got to lay down our life. Not at the end, every day. 1 Corinthians 15, 31, I affirm, my, I affirm by your pride, which I have in Messiah Yeshua, our Master, I die daily. The apostles, they died daily. It's something, an expectation of us. That if you're a Christian, believe in Yahweh, believe in Yeshua, you have to die daily in following his instructions. And it's difficult. It is dying. Right, now, this is this week's. Colossians, and it's basically just a couple of scriptures. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 25 from the HRB, Hebraic Roots Bible. If then you were raised with Messiah, seek the things above where Messiah is sitting at the right hand of Yahweh. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things on the earth. We have to set our minds on the things above, not on the things of this earth. We, we're always too... Um, I'm trying to think of the word. Um, always thinking about the things on this earth. Thinking about what might happen. What, you know, have I got enough money to live? Have I got enough money for food? Uh, where am I going to get my next uh, feed from? You know, I'm looking for a husband. Where am I ever going to find this husband? Am I ever going to get a husband? Um, I want a bigger house. I want a, I want a better house. I want a bigger kitchen. I want a smaller kitchen. I want a, uh, something else. I want this. I want that. Our minds are set too much on this, on this world, not on... What's he say there? Set your minds on the things above, not on the things on the earth. We've got to change our thinking, which is, again, dying to something, dying to our, our thoughts. Too concerned with the things of this world and not of the things of the next. For you died and your life has been hidden with Messiah in Elohim. Whenever Messiah our life is revealed, then also you'll be revealed with him in glory. We want to be revealed with him in glory because glory is for eternity. This life may it be 90, 120 or whatever it is. It's very short. Some people, it's even shorter than short. Some people don't even get out of the womb. You know? They haven't had to go through what we've, most of us had to go through. I like a scripture that basically says, um, greater is the day of your death than the day of your birth. Because at the day of your death, you're going into glory, hopefully, to live forever and ever with Yahweh. And so the things on this earth are nothing. We might as well die to them. Five, then put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil lust, covetousness, for these are idolatry on account of which things the wrath of Yahweh is coming on the deeds of disobedience. You know, for Shaman and me, as we watch the news, it's, you know, you look at these guys uh, robbing um, shops, stealing cars and all this, you know. They've got no idea what's going to happen to them. They think, oh, they're just living for this life. They just want to steal these things and have money and buy high-speed cars, etc., and have everything else. And they're not realising what's going to happen at their day of their death. It's all been for nothing. Among whom you also walked at one time, when you were living in these. But now you also put off all these things. Wrath, anger, malice, evil speaking, filthy conversation out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, having put off the old man with his practices. And put on the new life which is renewed in knowledge after the pattern in which it was originally created. Where there is neither Jew or Armenian circumcision and uncircumcision, foreigner, Scythian, slave or free man, but Messiah is all and in all men. You know, put off lying. How easy it is to lie. 
You know, just a little lie creeps in here and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's interesting there where he says, where there is neither Jew or Armenian, circumcision, uncircumcision, foreigner, Scythian, slave or free man. There's none of those things up there. It's interesting when you listen to some of the uh, Jewish teachers, we've been listening to some, uh, um, uh, what do they call them? Um, rabbi, rabbis, rabbis. And they're always sort of saying, we the Jews will make it uh, the, what do they call us? The, the goyim, the goyim. You know, oh, they're not going to really make it. You know, don't worry about the goyim. But us Jews, we're all there. <laughs> they don't realise here, when you're up there, it doesn't matter who you are. As long as you have shown your love for Yahweh. 12. Therefore, as the elect of Yahweh, all those who love him, who show their love for him, are the elect. doesn't matter whether you're a Jew, Scythian, Catholic, Protestant, Jew, whatever. The elect are those who obey him, have died on this earth to the things of this earth. Holy and beloved, put on bowels of mercy, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving yourselves if anyone has complaint against any, even as Messiah forgave you, so also you should forgive. One of the key things is we've got to walk in forgiveness. Especially for you females. Us males, it's very easy for us to forgive for some reason. We, we, we all made differently. But for us males, very easy for me to forgive Trevor. <laughs> I hope Trevor finds it very easy to forgive me, whatever. And Tim, you know, we find after a while, give us half an hour or something of forgiving the person. But, oh, who cares, you know, what doesn't really matter. But for a woman, you know, it's so hard sometimes because it's your makeup. Somehow you made. Yahweh's made you with different elements or whatever it is, you know, and very hard to forgive, but you've got to forgive. Forgive that husband. <laughs> forgive me. You know, we do silly things sometimes. But you've got to forgive. Just as Messiah forgave you. It's very easy for us to go to Messiah and say, please, Father, forgive me for what I've done. But after you've done that, you've got to forgive. You don't go back to it again. Don't even think about it. You've got to forgive. What's the thing you say, some Charmaine, sometimes how we know you haven't forgiven when it still hurts you? You can remember it. Remember what he did. But it doesn't hurt you anymore. You're not thinking, oh, what Alex did the other day. Oh, oh, he... I'm trying to think something what I did. <laughs> no, I better not. You know... But you've got to forget about it. Just as Messiah, because Messiah says, ask me for forgiveness, I'll forgive you, and I'll cast it as far as the east as the west, and I won't remember it anymore. He doesn't remember it once you've asked him for forgiveness. And that's what we have to do too. And part of that is dying to yourself. You've got to die, especially you women, <laughs> about the forgiveness bit. And above all these, have love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Messiah rule in your hearts. For that goal you are called in one body and be thankful to Messiah. Let the word of Messiah dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and exhorting yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to Elohim. What a way to get over this unforgiveness. Is to be singing, you know, for Charmaine. You know, oh, Alex has done that again. Oh, yeah. Well, the only way to get over it is to start singing to him. Thank you, Yahweh, that you've forgiven me. <clears throat> and everything, whatever you do, do in word or in work, do all things in the name of our Master, Yeshua, giving thanks to Yahweh the Father through him. Wives. He's picking on the wives. Be subject to your own husbands as is fitting in Messiah. Now that doesn't mean the, the male, the husband, is to lord it over you. The husband is supposed to love his wife as Yeshua loved the church and died for them. The husband is supposed to die when the alligator jumps in the pool with his wife. He's the one that's supposed to jump in and save her. 
when the big bear comes and starts to kill Charmaine, oh, what have I got to do? I'm not running backwards. I got to go and fight that bear. You know. Wives, be subject to your own husbands as is fitting in Messiah. Husbands, this is us, men. Love the wives and do not be bitter against them. Children, here's the children. We've got one or two children here, still. Obey the parents in all things. This is pleasing to Elohim. Now, as a child, they're going to die to the disobedience. It's like watching uh, Sophie. You know, she's challenging, challenging the parents all the time. And the parents' job is to drive out that spirit of rebellion with a rod of correction. Fathers, do not provoke your children. Now, well, we've got to be careful as parents and fathers. Do not provoke that child. 21. Fathers, do not provoke your children that they may not be discouraged. Servants, obey the masters according to flesh in all respects, not with eye service as hypocrites, but with a sincere heart giving reverence to Yahweh. Well, that's probably you as a working for a boss. That's how you must treat your boss. And whatever you do, do it from your whole soul, as to our master and not as to men. So in everything we're doing it, we're doing it as if it was doing it to Yahweh. So in a way, when I treat Charmaine, I've got to treat her as if she is Yahweh. When she's, to me, in the reverse way, she's got to look to me as if I'm Yahweh. And that's the way you're supposed to treat one another. It's dying again. To do that, it's sometimes it is dying. Dying to yourself, dying to your own thoughts, what you want to do. Knowing that from the Master you shall receive the reward of the inheritance... For you serve Yahweh the Messiah, but the one doing wrong will receive what he did wrong, and there is no respect of persons. So to treat everybody else is like treating Yahweh, sometimes you really got to die. Die to your own opinions and what you want. And I think if we could all do that, it would be a much better world. Because if we both say, like, we're just take some of myself living together you know if we could always she's looking at me as like Yahweh and I'm looking to her like a Yahweh we'd be bending over backwards to what, what do you want me what do you want to do dear what pictures do you want to go and see and even though I don't want to see it I'll go and see it because she wants to see it but but then she'll be saying to me but Alex what do you want to see you know, that's dying to yourself because sometimes you really want to see that picture and she wants to see that picture and you can't come together and start an argument and everything else. But when we're treating each other as Yahweh, you know, in the end, oh, how, we'll toss a coin. <laughs> Romans 6, 1 to 23. What then shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Let it not be. We who have died to sin, died to sin. Again, this dying bit, you've got to die to sin. Die to the, the hatred that might be in you. Die to your own traditions and your own thoughts and what you think you should be doing. We've got to die to it. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Let it not be. We who have died to sin, how shall we still live in it? Or are you ignorant that all who were baptised into Messiah Yeshua were baptised into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism. Into death there as Messiah was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, so also we should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together with him in the likeness of his death, so also we shall be in the resurrection. For we know this, that our old self was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed so that we no longer serve sin. For he who is dead has been freed from sin, but if we died with Messiah, we believe that also we shall live with him, knowing that Messiah, being raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. See, so basically, dominion. while we sin, while we uh, go our own way, 
Death has dominion over us, the final death. Second death, basically. And we've got to die to, to it. Die, die daily. For in that he died, he died to sin once for all, but that he lives, he lives to Elohim. So also you count yourselves to be truly dead to sin, but alive to Elohim and Yeshua Messiah our Master. Then do not let sin reign in your mortal body to obey it in its lusts. Neither present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to Elohim as one living from the dead, and your members instruments of righteousness to Elohim. For your sin shall not master it over you, for you are not under the penalty of law breaking but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not, uh, not under the penalty of the Torah but under grace? Let it not be. You know, there's a lot of people out there teaching, as we all know, saying, oh, well, you're under grace now. You don't have to follow the Torah. You're okay. And then what do they do? They go out there and they say, oh, I'm not under the Torah anymore. I'm saved by grace, so therefore I can go and get drunk. I can go and steal. I can go and do this. Uh, and I'm okay. I'll, I'll get into the kingdom. But he says, Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves as slaves for obedience, you are slaves to whom you obey, whether of sin to death or obedience to righteousness? So, yes, we're saved by grace, but if we go and sin, sin is our master, so we're not going to get into the kingdom. Whether of sin to death or obedience to righteousness. But thanks be to Elohim that you were slaves of sin, but you obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine to which you were delivered. So he's saying, well, thank God you're, you're still following the Torah. You're following his instructions. You're obeying his instructions. And having been set free from sin, you were enslaved to righteousness. You were enslaved to following the Torah. See, we're now, we are now slaves of his instructions of the Torah. You know, people out there say, well, you don't have to follow the Torah. Yes, you do, because I'm a slave to it now. I'm a slave to righteousness because I want to get into the kingdom of heaven. I speak as a man on account of the weakness of your flesh. For as you yielded your members as slaves to uncleanness, to iniquity, so now yield your members as slaves to righteousness unto sanctification. We've got to become slaves, basically, of the Torah, of his instructions. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free as to righteousness... Therefore, what fruit did you have then in the things with which you are now ashamed? For the end of these things is death. And that would be the second death, which goes into the lake of fire. So we've got to become slaves of righteousness. We've got no excuse. But now, having been set free from sin and having been enslaved to Elohim, you have your fruit unto sanctification and the end everlasting life. That's what we want. We want everlasting life. We don't want everlasting eternal death in the lake of fire. For the wages of sin is death, second death, but the gift of Yahweh is everlasting life in Yeshua, Messiah, our Master. All of us, you, you, you know, ask anybody, though, yeah, I want everlasting life in eternity with, you know, being blessed. I want it out of this place, really. It's a bit like hell on earth here, <laughs> lately. It's probably going to get worse very shortly. So there ends the message. So we really, in the end, we have to become slaves to righteousness, which is the Torah, Yahweh's instructions. We've got to die to all the things of this earth, our thoughts, what we want. You know, if Yahweh wrote it out and spoke to you in black and white and said, all right, Alex, look, at, I'm putting myself back when I used to work for Ford Motor Company. I'm working for Ford Motor Company. I start to learn all this stuff. I start to learn about the, the Sabbath day. All right, I got, to, I got to obey the Sabbath day. It's a plain instruction. It's the fourth commandment. It's quite plain. Then I got to do everything in my utmost to take, make sure I observe the Sabbath day as instructed, even if it costs me my job. Because I am battling for eternal life in his kingdom. And it could mean all the difference. 
And when you think of it and put it in black and white in your head or wherever you put it, think, well, this is the difference between eternal life or just having a job here on this earth, earning my money, etc., etc. What do you want, Alex? That's so ridiculous. I got, I got no choice. My choice is I want eternal life forever and ever and ever. And to get that eternal life, I've really got to t obey the Sabbath day. They won't. They want me to work on the Sabbath day. That's it. I'm, my choice. What, what, what would you do when you got a choice between this life and eternal life? Even if it killed me, I'd be better off dying, starving to death. But Yahweh says, "I'll always look after you, Alex." When you follow me, you obey me, you don't have to worry. But we don't trust that, do we? We're always tossing and turning and saying, oh yeah, but, 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 but. And we've got to die to the but, 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 but. We just got to say, this is it, that's it. When Yahweh says to you, you've got to wear a zit zit. I want you to wear that zit zit. I want you to wear it so that it reminds you of the Ten Commandments, my instructions, my Torah. But, 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 Lord, they're going to all laugh at me. They're going to ask questions about it. They're going to treat me like a second class citizen because I'm walking around with a, with a funny looking zit zit on my pants. They're going to say I'm a Jew, you know, whatever. What choice have you? You haven't got a choice. You've got to do it. Because it's a choice between eternal life and whatever this earth has got for you, and it hasn't got much. But we've got to learn to trust Yahweh that he will always look after us. And I can vouch for you in my own personal life, and I'm sure Charmaine can in her own personal life, that Yahweh has always looked after us no matter what. As long as we've followed his instructions, what he's asked us to do, he's supplied our man, and he's blessed us above abundantly you know when I, when I actually was fired from my job because the work was going down and I had to make a decision Yahweh you know, gave me a decision he said you can get another job as an engineer or do you want to work for me I said I'll work for you and ever since then he has blessed us more than when I was working as an engineer and I was earning a good big salary way back 25 years ago I was earning $80,000 a year whatever it was I mightn't have that $80,000 in the bank, but he still looks after us. And so we really, we've got to die, die to ourselves, die to what we think, what we imagine, follow his instructions to the letter, and he will look after you and I. Amen. Now, Shaman's got a little um, video she found, and we were watching it, and we thought, boy, this is a challenge, this little video. So I'm going to show it to you if I can work all this out. I was watching TV the other day, and this show comes on with these religious fanatics, and they were crazy. Well, you would think they were crazy if you didn't understand their culture and their religion. See, that's just the thing. See, they were worshippers of idols. And they took things to extremes. They painted their bodies, they wore these ridiculous costumes, they chanted, they danced, they even made sacrifices to their idols. But they had built these enormous temples to worship their idols in. It seems like their entire existence climaxed into this one scenario. This one over-the-top act of worship. You don't really relate, do you? Let's try it again.
I was watching TV the other day, and this show comes on with these religious fanatics, and they were crazy. Well, you would think they were crazy if you didn't understand their culture and their religion. See, that's just the thing. See, they were worshippers of idols. And they took things to extremes. They painted their bodies. They wore these ridiculous costumes. They chanted. They danced. They even made sacrifices to the idols. But they had built these enormous temples to worship their idols in. It seems like their entire existence climaxed into this one scenario. This one over-the-top act of worship. You don't really relate, do you? Let's try it again. I was watching TV the other day, and this show comes on with these religious fanatics, and they were crazy. Well, you would think they were crazy if you didn't understand their culture and their religion. See, that's just the thing. See, they were worshippers of idols. Worshippers of idols. Why is your hand over your eye? Because I'm a devil worshiper, what are you talking about? The Illuminati. Worship is a Bible. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And they took things to extremes. They painted their bodies. They wore these ridiculous costumes. They chanted. They danced. They even made sacrifices to the idols. But they had built these enormous temples to worship their idols in. It seems like their entire existence climaxed into this one scenario. This one over the top act of worship. Idol worship. You don't really relate, do you? Let's try it again. I was watching TV the other day. And this show comes on with these religious fanatics, and they were crazy. Well, you would think they were crazy if you didn't understand their culture and their religion. See, that's just the thing. See, they were worshippers of idols. The priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy kingdom. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. Worship is vital. Hit your line from my Sabbath, and I am profaned among you. Worship is a Bible. took things to extremes. 
They painted their bodies. They wore these ridiculous costumes. They chanted. They danced. They even made sacrifices to the idols. But they had built these enormous temples to worship their idols in. It seems like their entire existence climaxed into this one scenario. This one over-the-top act of worship. Idol worship. It's not only golden calves anymore.